when a scouting party came north looking for sites for missions, there were two major criteria. I, sometimes we find it difficult to say, but the Spaniard of the late 18th century, much like my ancestors of the late 18th century, were human. I know for some of us natives, we look back at that time and we go, how could they have been human and do what they did to our ancestors? But the human needs are the same. You need water, potable water, and you need a good place to live, the environment. So when the Spanish came up, they would look, and in the sites, in the area above, if you saw smoke, you knew people were living there. And where people were living, the native people, there would be potable water. And the second criteria then is once you find water, and if there are people there, now you have your workers. You have the people to change. The tactic was used to convert Indians. When you convert Indians, then uh, the theory was that they would um, uh, seek to comply because they would be one of the Spanish community. The church claimed vast acres of land in and around their presidios uh, and their missions. The idea that uh, uh, to declare uh, Native people uncivilized uh, was to give some justification for saying that uh, they are not competent to own land. And we will keep the lands for the natives in trust with the church until such time as they become competent. The church was supposed to be our trustee and at some point in, in, in uh, the tenure of the Catholic Church and the colonization period of the Spanish, uh, the natives of California were supposed to uh, be given some land that the church had claimed. We were supposed to benefit. It never happened. The California mission, Spanish occupation, Mexican occupation are total disasters for native peoples, but the real disaster, as we know, comes with gold rush and the American Go West Young Man movement that comes after that. They saw their families being killed. They saw massacres. They saw death. Um, and I'm not afraid to use the term genocide. They saw genocide happening. So a lot of people, I'm sure, were, I'm sure it was a, 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 a pretty horrifying time to be an Indian person when you see all of these horrible things happen. Uh, the Catholic Church was getting a, uh, uh, was getting a foothold governmentally in California. What the Vatican is today in their small little territory in Rome was worldwide. The church had, uh, had governmental interests in uh, all of these colonies. And I do think that the, the Mexican occupation, for as short as it was, looked to uh, uh, taking away from the Catholic Church this governmental power. And that's what secularization was all about. Over time, like many of my ancestors, are born at missions, and this is the only world they knew. So they accept it. So the disaster then repeats itself when there's the revolution of Mexico from Spain and the new Mexican government says to the native peoples who were at the missions under Spain, get out, go back and live in the forest as it were before we pulled you into missions. Well, you now have 50 years of folks who didn't grow up hunting with a bow and arrow and you're disenfranchising them, you're kicking them out because they needed the native peoples out so they could claim the lands. Uh, those who stayed around the missions were lost. Those who went back to where their villages were supposed to be were also lost because uh, the villages were not there any longer. All California Indians were hit hard, but um, I know Ohlone because of our area, we were hit by all three waves of invasion. We were hit by the, um, the Spanish missions, the Mexican secularization and then the American gold rush period and because uh, of the area that we're in population sort of, of, of Anglo-American um, folks coming here occupying our lands. So Indians all the way back to the Spanish uh, colonization were on the run. 